Do you have a sense of what the anti-Putin sentiment is? Or if at all, uh, like, has mean? it grown? Like, has it grown in Russia? In Russia? Yeah. Uh, I think it probably has grown a little bit, uh, but um, I, I, if I'm correct in understanding your question, you're sort of going like, how soon are the Russian people going to rise up and overthrow Putin? Uh, not very soon, I think. It's, what, it's, why is that? Not v very, not, 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 not soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. more like never, really, because uh, that's not that's not what we do in Russia. Okay, so I, I, it's very similar to to China because the the same. Same questions are being asked right now about about what's going on, and I'm like, uh, sorry, I don't think change is coming. Uh, no, it, no. In China, it's a bit different. I, I do, you know, I think the 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 resentment is actually against specific policies, which which is much better, which is much easier to achieve than than freedom and democracy. These kind of more abstract concepts, right. um, and yeah. and perhaps the, the the government actually be a bit more responsive to to these uh, limited policies. To add to that, in in Russia, there's also a, like a uh, a cultural dimension to it, which is uh, the most important thing in in Russian politics is to have a strong leader, uh, and this is a product of centuries of events that taught Russians that basically at any time you have a weak leader, bad things happen. Um, there is a period in Russian history called Times of Trouble, which is the end of the uh, Rurikid dynasty, um, where Ivan the Terrible, and by the way, this is uh, to, to reinforce that point. Do you, do you know that Ivan the Terrible isn't called Ivan the Terrible in Russian? Yeah, Ivan the Great he's called, or something? Uh, he's, he's called Ivan the Fearsome, hmm. because to be feared is good, even if you're terrible. So if you've got someone who's fearsome and terrible, you go, well, at least he's fearsome, right? Whereas in many other parts of the world, you go, well, he's terrible, let's get rid of him, right? Um, and what Russians learned is when you don't have a strong leader, as you didn't have in times of trouble and several other times, bad things happen, famines happen, the wars happen, you get invaded, people die, etc. And so there's this historical um, wound almost in Russian mythology, which is like, you better make sure you've, you, back, you have a strong leader and you back him to the hilt. Now, the good thing about that is, when the leader dies, uh, as long as you know it seemed to be legitimate, you know it was a natural death or whatever, um, the country can flip overnight. I mean, Joseph Stalin dies in 1953. Khrushchev comes in and goes, "That really mm -hmm. wasn't the good stuff." You know, we, we 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 that's not the communism that we were trying to build, and everybody moves on all of a sudden, right? Um, so these things can flip very very quickly uh, when when the leadership changes. Now. Are people going to overthrow Vladimir Putin? No. Is there going to be a palace coup? I can't imagine one. You know. But if if the time comes and the three of us are still alive when he he goes one way or another, um, then then you get uh, there is the potential for the country to go in a completely different direction, completely different. Um, is that likely though? I don't think so because Russian culture doesn't change, and if you value stability and strength above all, well, why would you need democracy? Democracy is kind of like a rich people's game. Well, so I, I you know, I grew up in a place where, where we also had a very strong kind of heavy handed kind of government. And the, the leader of Singapore, the founder of Singapore, uh, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew actually said this, I'm going to read you the quote. And I, I grew up mm. knowing this. Now, if democracy will not work for the Russians, a white Christian people, can we assume that it will naturally work with Asians? What a racist. <laughs> um, yeah, that is a direct quote. That is a direct quote by uh, Lee Kuan Yew, as was in his book. Um, and um, that, that is what he thought uh, yeah. about, about, yeah, about sort of right. like cultural determinism. But, but this is the thing that... There's a weird kind of Western arrogance that these sort of powerful, you know, equal rival societies, Russia... Who we've you know sparred with for a hundred years that they're all of a sudden going mm -hmm. to change their behavior. We saw this when we were fighting the Arabs during the Iraq War. The idea was what they really need is Western democracy accompanied by exactly. conversions mm -hmm. to our capitalist model and Christian missionaries entering the country. And it, it seemed at root like a nonsensical idea. Like this may well not work in Iraq. 
And in fact, you saw the Sunni Shia fighting and so on. I mean, immediately th- this began. So it's the same thing. I mean, I constantly hearing you say this, that had been my suspicion that there was a 0% chance that a Russian strongman who's doing a pretty competent job was going to be removed from power for scoring a tie in a war. But I just, again, it was one of those, I don't know, really kind of things. But the same thing in China. I mean, she is not going anywhere. I mean, what you're seeing, actually, I can read Chinese at a cute, like, first grade level. And I mean, the tweets on China, Chinese Twitter today are basically indicating they're going to open the country. Like one of them earlier today said, you only have to go to the COVID center if you want to. That's my half ass translation. But I mean, what, what they're saying is mm. the, the biggest, most hated portion of this, you go to this sort of camp for two weeks, is ending. And in a couple of days, they're going to start unlatching the buildings and so on. And that's going to be the response to the protests and the very limited rioting. It's not going to be the Communist Party steps down. They're, they're intervening steps you can take before becoming Americans. Right. Completely. <laughs> Unfortunately. And uh, no, no. You, well, it's almost like cultures are different, Will and Melissa, yeah. right? It's almost like not everyone in the world thinks like us. Uh, and uh, you're right, it's Western arrogance because you see this now with the World Cup in Qatar. Uh, I was you know, say that. And look, the obvious disclaimer, yes, I condemn the way that Qatar treats gay people and women and migrant Slaves. workers. Of course I do. I, I, I do. I think it's terrible. I don't agree with it. But is it fair of us to give them the World Cup, right? Didn't have to happen. It was given to them by FIFA. You give them the World Cup and then you come to their country and you go, oh, this is wrong. We don't like this and your laws and this are complete. Well, I I mean, I don't know that it is, you know, even though I think those things are very, very wrong and bad and, and wrong and bad, you bad know, and wrong, but and bad and wrong. But, w- w- you know, do different cultures have different values and you, you can't, I don't think the West job is to go around to every other country in the world and tell them how to live their lives. Like we don't want people to tell us how to live our lives, right? Why, right, why should right. people in other countries do the same? And Russia has its own culture. And I'm afraid in Russian culture, they're going to stick with whoever the top dog is until he stops being top dog. But then there's an there's a opportunity for change. The problem is the, it's a kind of self-correcting mechanism in Russia because why, do you, why has Putin cracked down? Why has he become more authoritarian over time? Why did he invade Ukraine in 2014 and now again? And why did he want the Sochi Olympics so much and all of that? Because as a country gets richer and more stable, and by the way, as a fierce critic of Putin's, I will give him this, under his watch, I'm not saying because of his actions, but under his watch, the country became much more stable and much more prosperous. Mm-hmm. And I actually, in fact, mm-hmm. I take back what I said. It was thanks in many ways to, to his policies. Now, you may disagree with his policies in some ways, but they did achieve stability. Uh, they ended the war in Chechnya, uh, the, and they, they dealt with the terrorism problem in Russia over time, and uh, which was hugely significant. And the country became more prosperous and stable in, in every other way during his time. Right. So um, what happens when you get to that point? Well, suddenly people go, oh, okay, well, we've got stability, we've got safety, we've got economic prosperity, I'm making more money. Well, maybe maybe we should start thinking about you know change you know democracy or doing things a bit differently. People start to ask questions. You know, why do we need the strongman leader if if we're prosperous, stable, and and comfortable, and there are no terrorists? Right. When we had terrorism, we needed a strongman leader, right? But do we still need to have him? Well, maybe not. People start asking questions, right? And that's the point at which you go. We have external enemies, guys. Look at these evil Ukrainians. Look at what they're doing. The evil Americans have encloaked, they're encloaking Russia in, in their aggressive mentality or whatever it is. The, 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 the generation of foreign threats and internal crackdowns are a product of the fact that Vladimir Putin came to power at a time when the three of us were worried about the millennium bug, right? He's been in power since basically 2000. So he's, he's, there is going to be natural kind of diminishing of his position unless he takes steps to reinforce it. And the war in Ukraine and taking Crimea were huge boosts to his popularity. The taking Crimea in 2014 basically made him invulnerable in, in Russian politics, right? Like yeah. there was no questioning him after that. Like this is a guy who's taken back Russian territory. Um, this, is, this is how Russia works. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 